My name is Kristen Griffey, and I am a peer support specialist with Luke Dorf in Washington County, and I work on a housing team, which means that I work with folks who, like myself, have a diagnosis and who are either at risk of homelessness or experiencing homelessness. And we do something that's called the Rental Assistance Program. And there are two of us on the team. We went from a team of five to a team of two. And what we do is we help people to find spaces that they want to live in, different apartment options, um, things like that. And then we actually help that person to go through the application process, make sure that that's a good fit, the community. Um, and then we, we visit with that person for about a year. Every week we're hanging out and going into the community and just making sure that things are okay. I was asked here um, by Lyra to talk about boundaries and as a peer support specialist, um, I've learned a couple of things and become very fascinated by boundaries, especially having a diagnosis because what, what I find myself is a boundary is supposed to be kind of a, a set rule or a space that, that you do for yourself. And what I find is, is that sometimes when I'm a little bit having more symptoms, I'm a little bit more crisis-y or whatnot, my boundaries might change big time. I have to say that I could not have set this up better myself, this uh, microphone, because the microphone is a good example of something that's in my space. I don't feel comfortable with it, but it's a great learning tool for me to be able to say, okay, I'm going to... I'm going to accept this because it's going to be for the greater good, right? We're going to talk about some pretty cool stuff today. I want to explain a little bit about how I kind of do, whether it's a presentation, it's more of a discussion for me. And the reason that I, I feel that way is because boundaries are very personal things. And not everybody has the same boundary. And you guys are all the expert of yourself on the, on the boundary stuff. I have a couple of exercises, activities that I would really appreciate if folks would would participate in because it's really allowing us to learn not only about ourselves but about each other. That being said, too, I respect the fact that I'm on your turf. This is your house, your rules, and if somebody doesn't feel comfortable participating, tells me, oh, my gosh, what are you thinking of having us do this, please speak up. It's super flexible. And I, I hope that you guys are flexible, too, and forgiving. And I guess I'm going to just kind of start with a discussion. And I apologize for anybody that might be on the spot with food in their mouths. But I kind of want to open up a discussion about boundaries. And I want to know, what are some boundaries at North Star? Can anybody tell me? I see some shrugs. Okay, so that's a boundary. Good. Thank you. So time, there can be boundaries around time. How did you know that that was a boundary? Not to put you on the spot, but how did you know? Okay, so so that boundary was set ahead of time. It was something that was an expectation coming in to an orientation, and you were told, hey, there's a boundary here. We don't want you walking in here at 3 a.m. because it's just not happening. And you agreed to it, right? Okay, okay, any other boundaries? Everything else is pretty much free for all here? So a boundary can also be something that you don't do, or it can. It doesn't have to be about, here, this is what I do, and this is who we are, and this is what it could be, and this is my boundary, I don't do this. So boundaries can kind of flow both ways, right? There are personal boundaries that you all are expected to respect with each other, but then there's kind of an overall culture that kind of helps to define that a little bit. So there's a little bit of fluctuation and allowance for if there is a crisis situation going on, it can be supported. And maybe those boundaries, like I'll, I'll give an example, what I've noticed for myself and also what I've seen in the community sometimes. Okay, so an example would be if I go into a, a camp, somebody where they're living in a camp, those boundaries might be way, way bigger around that camp that I better announce myself and I better be coming in and respecting that area because why it's their home and their community 
and safety. Yes. And it's so huge to recognize that what boundaries do for folks is that they do create safety. And so when somebody might be feeling a little bit afraid, the boundaries might become a lot bigger for some people. Have you guys all heard about fight, flight, or freeze? Okay, so what we know about fight, flight, or freeze is that so some people, when they're in distress, the heart rate might go up, their boundaries might, their space bubble might get really, really huge, and the voice might go up, and all of these things that set boundaries, because boundaries aren't just words, but their body language, their voice tone, their posture, uh, their a whole bunch of other things. So in a fight and flight where the heart rate goes up and the boundaries might be more rigid and the voice gets louder and bigger and don't come near me and those kind of things, that there's another side of that where sometimes when folks are in crisis, they freeze. And when somebody's in a freeze crisis, a boundary might get more blurry. A boundary might become less there. A person might feel less inclined to stand up for themselves more inclined to give everything that they have away because that's the way their body and their mind is regulating that crisis. And so I became really fascinated by boundaries because what I found for myself was is that when I was in a crisis situation or the more that I had symptoms of my diagnosis, and I'll tell you, I got to do a disclaimer here, I'm not a real big diagnosis-y kind of girl, but where I would have symptoms of my diagnosis, I would notice that my boundaries really reflected who I was and what I was going through. And so I started to really learn to use that kind of as a gauge. How am I viewing the world right now? How am I viewing myself right now? What are my boundaries kind of showing? And I'm a freezer. I freeze. And so when I'm crisis you can tell I'm crisis because you could come up to me and you could say, hey, Kristen, you know what? I really need $5. And I could say, oh, I only have $5 to last me for the next two weeks. But here, you have it. That's me. That's me when I'm in, in not a good place or for myself, not a good place. I want to talk about, I've heard a little bit about different types of boundaries. And we've heard physical boundaries. We've heard time boundaries, emotional boundaries also, and, and what an emotional boundary can look like, sharing too much or sharing too little. And ag again, I go back to that. When you're in a healthier space and everybody has their own, their own place of where I feel, I call it, do I feel heavy or do I feel light? And that's my own personal way of gauging it. Do I feel heavy or do I feel light on this? So when people tend to be like what I would consider to be more feeling on the light side, they might be feeling a little bit better about the world, about them, themselves, about the people that are around them. And they might be able to better put a boundary out there that, or enforce a boundary that they've already had. Maybe sharing the appropriate amount, with, you know, and again, it's personal, but not running up to a stranger on the street and saying, oh my gosh, I had the worst childhood ever and this is what my mom is and my, you know, just kind of being a little bit more what we would consider appropriate. And then if, um, if you're in that do I feel heavy kind of stage, you might be less inclined to put the boundaries, keep the boundaries where you've put them in space. And, and something really important about boundaries, has anybody here ever heard of RAP? Wellness Recovery Action Plan. So something that's kind of like wrap, a wrap plan is actually being very mindful and purposeful about your health and your wellness. I kind of throw boundaries into that too, is really being mindful and purposeful about your boundaries because when you're doing it on the fly, it's kind of going to go right along with your emotions. But if it's something that you can set and practice and be very consistent about, not only is it going to be feeling better to yourself, but also to the people around you. Because people, consistency with boundaries 
are what make things flow a whole lot more smoothly for people, generally speaking. So this is, this is one of the things that I, I am going to talk about. And what we really talk about in boundaries is that there are porous boundaries, which is, and I brought some things to kind of show it. That's like a sponge. There's porous boundaries where I'm just taking everything from everyone. And then there are rigid boundaries. And a rigid boundary would be, nope, get away from me. I'm and not taking anything from anyone. And then there's healthy boundaries. And healthy boundaries are really a combination of rigid and porous boundaries. And some people might be be really rigid in... I, if I come to North Star, I'm going to be very, nobody's coming near me. Nobody's going to mess with my stuff. Nobody's sitting by me. And because that's how I'm viewing the world in this space. But I, ha I might have a very porous boundary when it comes to my family. I just can't say no. I just need to, I need to please everybody. And so there's those, you can have those extremes in different settings. The more that you come to healthy, consistent boundaries and remember everybody's boundaries are different, healthy, consistent boundaries for yourself. And what that really is, and, and I'm actually going to, I want to read this quote because I thought that it was an important, a, a good way of putting it, is boundaries are a limit you set between yourself and people due to the thoughts, activities, and things that are not in your best interest. And I thought that that was pretty poignant because boundaries actually, they, they protect. And has anybody ever heard of the hand model um, of the brain? So there's, there's the model, hand, hand model of the brain. And what that model says is that this part of, of the hand replicates like your, your brain stem all the activities where you breathe, your heart, your heart rate and everything like that. And then you got this middle part of it, and that's your emotional centers. That's where your memories, um, some, of your, some of them have emotions and whatnot tied to them, so they go to a different part of the brain. And then there's the cognitive part of the brain, the, the frontal lobe part that separates us from everything else. And when you get into that emotional state, you actually kind of flip your lid and that whole cognitive frontal lobe shuts down and you go on autopilot and your emotions kind of take over and your heart rate and that goes into that fight, flight, freeze thing. This part is all really, really intact and taking over. This part shuts down for a reason because we don't have time to think about it when we're in a scary place. We need to just react. So the more that you can have those boundaries set, practice those boundaries and move them from here into here where they become habit and whatnot, it's going to, it will help when you get into if, if a crisis situation, whatnot, that you've moved it to a certain part in your brain and it helps a lot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, a, a line, a tape, and I'm going to ask people to stand on this line. And I want you that to be, it's a boundary. And I'm going to throw out some, just a couple scenarios. And I want people to either step back from the line or across it. If it's a boundary that would be, if it's an uncomfortable boundary, you would step back from the boundary. If it's something that, hey, it's good for me in this scenario, you would cross it. And it just kind of physically gets people thinking and being able to see that not everybody has the same boundaries. Lynn said, don't we, don't we kind of learn our boundaries as a child and like bullying and that kind of stuff affect it? It can because what is that? That's, that's kind of reacting to a situation, right? And when you're a child, whether it's from a family member, whether it's from kids that are not being so kind or whatnot, it can affect how you feel or it could be somebody that has power over you and said, hey, this is your boundary. Here's the good news. You, all, you can change your boundaries. You can change your boundaries and you can practice new boundaries. So even though it might have affected you and there was a whole different set of rules in childhood, now you got some say, which is kind of cool.
So I'm going to have everyone just kind of stand a, up by the red line, please, across the line. Got everybody all crowded into this personal space stuff, right? So if this scenario, if this is something like, hey, that wouldn't bug me at all, whatever, I want you to step forward across the boundary. If that's something, no way, man, that ain't happening on my watch, take a step back, okay? So I'm just going to throw out a couple of scenarios. So here's how I'm going to ask you to gauge it. I'm going to ask you to, first reaction, does it feel light or does it feel heavy? Or as my three-year-old niece would say, does it feel sparkly or does it feel ew? Okay, so just your first reaction, first gut reaction is your friend eats your food without asking. Okay, so some people say, huh, that's all right. That's not like, that's not going to end my world or anything. And it's a friend, right? And again, everybody's going to have different guts. Have you ever heard of the gut brain? You know that you have more feelers in your gut than you do in your head? Okay, so I'll have everybody step back on, on the line then. Someone that you just met comes up and hugs you. Okay. So everybody has some different stuff going on, and that's there's no, no right or wrong answers on any of these. Okay, so I'll have you go back, and I'm going to say, your peer support specialist wants to be your Facebook friend. Some of these, some of these will naturally weed out, and you know what? I, I've been off and on of Facebook, and right now I'm on and off time, so I hear you. Okay, so this is whatever it means to everybody take this as individual. Your partner calls you several times a day to find out where you are. Your friend is always late to meet you. Some people, it's okay. So there's, remember, there's that time boundary too. So that would fall under that time boundary. Okay, I'm going to do just a couple more here. Your peer is always yelling at you. That's a good boundary statement right there. Homie, don't play that. And so your peer is always yelling at you. Are you a person that yells back? Does your boundary grow more rigid when somebody's yelling at you? I'm going to tell you guys a secret that is one of the coolest things that I've ever seen, and I do this constantly now because I'm a little obsessed, is you ever seen the oxometers thing that they put on your finger when if you go to the emergency room? Yes. Shows your heart rate, shows your oxygen levels. Okay, so oximeter shows you also how do you react in a certain situation. Are you a fight, flight? Are you a freeze? Does my heart rate go way up, my oxygen go way down or opposite are you freeze mine goes down it it really it's something that you can gauge someone you know is always swearing during the conversations you're having with them <laughs> no <laughs> so some people it's like it's cool it's all right and some people it's like no i'm not and that's a boundary too that's a personal boundary your friend wakes you up at 3 a.m. with a non emergency my boundary changes too, and especially when my sleep's involved. I'm going to do one more. You're sitting with your peers, and they start to gossip about other peers. Do you speak up? Do you walk away? Join in? That's a boundary. That's a personal boundary. That concludes this part of the presentation. So the purpose of that really was to, to just kind of show kinetically to yourself, to people around you, that not everybody views boundaries as the same and not everybody has their same set of boundaries. And like you said, it can be completely changeable depending on the day, the person, circumstances, and what's going on. So we kind of view from our lens, right? We kind of, we kind of view, like, if I'm like this, I might assume that everybody else that does this is doing it for the same reason that I am. And, and so a really huge piece of, of setting boundaries, of keeping your own boundaries and maintaining those, what we know is that people who tend to keep their boundaries tend to also respect other people's boundaries, and communication is key. I don't know you guys. I'm not going to come up and start like hitting your hat off your head and being like, what's up? And, and high-fiving you and fist bumping you and giving you, I, I, you would probably give a hug because you said you're a hugger, but I'm just saying is 
I'm not just going to walk up and start assuming that you are all just open to me. And so the only way that I know that is kind of like going back to the North Star. How do you know the boundaries? How did you know that this place was had concrete hours or whatnot during orientation? Well, I can probably guess. I'm just going from my own experience. I'm not going to go up and meet somebody and say, hey, let's have an orientation with each other about our boundaries. That's never how I've done it. Might actually be a good idea but for a few people, but it's probably not going to happen. You're not going to meet somebody in a parking lot and say, hey, dude, what's your boundary? Because uh, I need to get around this side of my car or whatever. So we look at the body language. We, we really pay attention and we do have those radars and we have that propensity to actually misread. So communication is really key. I can tell you from a couple, just like, just personally, is that my boundary might even change if I'm not feeling well. I'm not going to be as close to people as I normally would, even people that I care about. That might be just a natural defense that, that my body does, is to try to keep people safe from a cold or, or whatnot. Yeah. It does, that makes, and so for some people, it's kind of a known thing. Like, they get that about themselves, and for me, I'm a slow learner. It took me a while to get that for myself, and it really started kind of with rap for me. And actually, when I'm working with folks, I'll ask, hey, you want to put a rap around this? You want to put a rap? Because rap, to me, is also very movable, and so we do a lot of rap around do you want to put a wrap around your boundaries and then we just kind of use the line for boundaries how do I know that my boundaries are doing well but the, the, you know what I mean it's changeable we get creative and and you're right it absolutely your your boundaries will absolutely reflect kind of like in the beginning when I said that gauge thing I can gauge myself by my boundaries even when I'm in denial about anything else that I, I could be like Oh, I'm not getting depressed right now. I'm not getting depressed at all. Okay, why did I just give away my last five dollars? Why did I, I can gauge it? So, if I'm communicating with someone and I need something from them, and they say, you know what, I'm not comfortable doing that, they're asserting a pretty healthy boundary. They're not comfortable with that. Absolutely. That's not what I want to hear. So, what are what can I do to make sure that I'm having a better reaction to the person so they feel respected? I wish that there was an, an absolute answer, but from my understanding about boundaries is that the more healthy we are with our own boundaries, the more that that's going to flow towards how we respect other people's boundaries. And so I can't go up and say, hey, you know what? Uh, your boundaries suck right now, and I really don't want to hear what you're saying and, or this or that. That means that I don't have myself in check because if I am constantly putting out there about other people's boundaries then that means that I'm I'm really not probably doing what I need to do for myself does that mean that somebody else can't disrespect your boundaries and people could disrespect your boundaries but I think what Lyra is saying is that in the case of somebody is clearly stating I have this boundary and the person who maybe wants to cross the boundary, isn't really necessarily hearing it. Is that? Yeah. And so that would be actually a sign of somebody needed to work on their own boundaries. It's the hardest thing to do sometimes to do. And, and I'll tell you um, one way if, if people need to be supported with that kind of stuff, kind of like what we went back to in the very beginning was, how do you know what North Star's policies are and their brown, you know, what are North Star's boundaries? Is it something, is it a discussion that, this is a supported environment, is it a discussion that needs to be had about, hey, you know what, I'm just not feeling really good about everybody taking on their own boundary stuff. How can we support that? What kind of policies can we, can, can we maybe put in place temporarily that we can as a group agree on? Um, there's something that's called step up, step back, you know, um, 
if if people are stepping up too much and and asserting too much and some people who may be more of freeze type people or not feel as able to be heard then maybe we create something around that that makes sure that everybody gets the the equal safety which is the key is that everybody feels safe and that everybody feels honored and sometimes and that goes back to things being a little changeable that might be something that that north star and you all decide to do for a week and then revisit it in a week and say hey how's it going we might need to change this just like we change every single day due to circumstances so it's it's not a bad discussion to have and it and it does go back to that communication but i think that ultimately it also goes back to a person setting healthy boundaries because healthy is key and and the boundaries being respected um even if we don't think the same thing for that person so do you guys want to do one more activity this one's even a little bit more uncomfortable so i'll give you that i'm going to have everybody get get a partner so if any if you feel comfortable grab a partner or get a partner have a partner I'm going to call out a couple of different things that I want you to do with your partner, and then I'm going to say partner to partner, and I want you to switch partners. Here, here's the key in, in everything that, that I do, is not to overthink it. I want everybody with your partner, finger to finger. Okay, I want everybody knee to toe, however, however that is for you. Knee to toe, however that is for you. You don't have to overthink it. Okay, I want everybody palm to palm. Palm to palm. Okay, I want everybody to switch partners. Okay, thumb to thumb. Wrist to shoulder. Foot to foot. Change partners. Ready? Backside to backside. Neck to neck. It's okay. It's okay. Everybody's reaction is valid. Nose to nose. Okay. Okay. That was beautiful. I have some questions I would like to ask you. You know what? I so much appreciate you guys for going out of your comfort zone and, and doing this. Thank you. I really appreciate your doing this. Were there any positions that made you feel uncomfortable? Nose to nose? Okay, so that's the one I hear the most is nose to nose. What made it uncomfortable when you were nose to nose? Too close? Here's one for you. How did you know when your partner was uncomfortable? Scream? People, did people kind of get jokey and say, ha ha, yeah, no, not so much? Yeah, that was common. It's really interesting because that, that particular piece is something that that actual thing that you just did is something that is used for people who are experiencing dating violence younger kids who like teenage and whatnot and who maybe don't really have a sense of what a boundary is kids who have been in a lot of trauma who may not have learned personal boundaries as they were going up and they found that that activity has been really powerful to show Huh, you know what? I actually not only do I have those weird feelings and and as you noticed, don't overthink it. I didn't want people like going, "Oh, hey, you," let, as much as as possible and speeding it up towards the end because you you really show that if you're not picking somebody that you feel super comfortable with, it's going to be even less comfortable. And so it it really gives a sense of of that part of it. So we talked about some the different types of boundaries and we talked about there's the time one, there's also material boundaries. Nobody here, even though I think you guys are all amazing, is going to come up and take the keys to my car and walk out and and drive away without me at least having a little bit of a fit. So there are material boundaries, right? <laughs> Unless I'm in a bad place, and then I might not care for a couple minutes, but I'm just saying. Sexual boundaries, which are huge, and that last little piece that I did, like I said, was in dating violence. So sexual boundaries, material boundaries, time boundaries, they all feed into personal boundaries. 
because we all get to make choices about those things. And then there's also intellectual boundaries. And intellectual boundaries, I could say to you, you know what, what you just said, I just don't like that. I've just kind of like negated your intellectual boundary. And you could come back to me and say, hey, I'm just as worthy as you are. I don't care if you got that microphone in your face. And I would say, you're right, good boundary. And so those are the, the types of boundaries. And what I really kind of want to close with is a little bit of a demonstration. And then, of course, if you guys have any, um, any questions or anything like that, I talked, I talked a little bit about rigid boundaries, porous boundaries, and healthy boundaries. And so this is something that I do, number one, just because I'm, I like to have things in my hand and do weird things. But I look at it like this. So... If I have porous boundaries, and that pretty much means I kind of don't have many boundaries, I could take on everybody else's, a lot of everybody's stuff, right? This is going to represent everybody else's shit. I hope I didn't offend anybody's boundary with that word. I am pouring water into a sponge, and it took until there before it even started kind of leaking out, and that's what's going to happen. If I take on everybody else's stuff, it's going to come out, promise, whether it means that I'm going to yell at that one person that put too much in, in me, explode on that person, whether it means that I'm going to make myself ill, physically, emotionally, whatever. So that's porous boundaries. Then I might have had it, and my boundaries are going to become so rigid. I don't care who you are. Don't talk to me. Get away from me. Nothing you say is going to come in. Nothing. I don't care. My boundary, my world. And I could do that all day long. And it's never going to have any, anything come into it. Healthy boundaries. Healthy boundary is going to clearly define the container of who you are and where the world is. This is your boundaries. And you're going to be able to nourish yourself, have enough from the outside, enough from the inside. It's going to stay safe. You might decide some days, you know what, I'm going to put some of this over here. I might need to be a little bit more rigid today because guess what? I just got some really bad news last night and I don't have any more room in this container. But everybody here has porous boundaries, rigid boundaries healthy boundaries and the healthier your container is the more you're going to be able to define what's you and what's out here in a in a good way and i thank everybody for sitting through this thank you Thank you so much, Kristen, for being here. And thank you, everyone, for participating today. I think we all learned a lot. And thank you again. If you like this video and want to support North Star, please go to northstarclubhouse.org and click Donate.